hit me. Oh, I ain't never hit anyone yet. Just stand still, Bud Line. <laughs> That's enough. You, you've proved you can do it. I got to draw a picture of the famous Ned Buntline who wrote all them storybooks about Western heroes. But we, you don't have to aim so close. Well, I got to draw an accurate picture. Now, hold your head where it was. No, no, a little bit to the left. There. Now I can finish your head. You're going to finish me. Well, if you live, you can put it in a book. Originator of the dime novel portraying life in the wild and woolly west was a great trial to Marshall Wyatt Earp. Every time the author left New York to gather material for a new book, he expected Wyatt to cooperate with his fantastic ideas. But when Wyatt moved from Dodge City to Tombstone, he thought he had gotten rid of Buntline. Alas, alas. Well, Spencer, there you are, Tombstone, wickedest town in the West. Now, make a good sketch of it, because we'll put it on the cover of my new book. It's very, uh, colorful, Mr. Buntline. Colorful? I'll sell 250,000 copies of the first edition. <laughs> oh, and wait until you meet my special friend, Marshall Wyatt Earp. Yes, sir. King of the Frontier, that's what I called him. And that book sold 500,000 copies, not counting the English rights. <laughs> Wyatt Earp, well, he's a gold mine. I'll bet he's still wearing that Buntline special coat I gave him. I want to meet some real outlaws, Wyatt. My opposition is cleaning up with books on the, on the James Boys and Sam Bass and Billy the Kid. Of course, it's the old Robin Hood legend brought up to date. But my readers, they, they want outlaws too. Some gallant band that takes from the rich and gives to the poor. That's the kind of... What's the matter? Well, Mr. Buntline, I've never met any outlaws like that. Well, what about the Clanton gang? No, Mr. Buntline. But you do know them, don't you, Wyatt? Oh, yeah, yeah I know them. Uh, we're in luck. He knows the Clantons. Now, Wyatt, all I want is an introduction. I'm sorry, Mr. Buntline. But if you'll take my advice, you won't go anywhere near them. But why? Because they're horse and cattle thieves. They rob stages and they shoot men in the back. That's why. Well, now, maybe you're a little prejudiced, Wyatt. I mean, being a peace officer. <sighs> Mr. Buntline, it just doesn't do me any good to try and argue with you. Now, the Clantons are dangerous, low-down hoodlums. But if you want to glorify them in a book, well, then that's your business. But maybe circumstances drove them into crime. Maybe some deep personal tragedy embittered them. Mr. Buntline, please. Marshal Earp knows this country. If the Clantons are dangerous. Uh, all right. All right, Spencer. Maybe you're right. Maybe I had better take the Marshal's advice. Wyatt, how about having dinner with us down at the hotel? Be glad to. Snelly Cashman has the finest food in town. Oh, it's real warming to see you again, my friend. Well, it's wonderful to see you too, Mr. Buntline. You know, that gun you gave me is, well, it's kind of been my right arm all these many years. Good. Well, Mr. Spencer, I uh, want to thank you for backing me up. The Clantons are no people to monkey around with. I'll see you later. All right. This is just plain foolishness. Inviting a book writer to dinner and then coming all the way in after him. Emma, he wrote Dameron of the Nugget, and Dameron thinks we ought to treat him friendly. A man who's friends with Wyatt Earp. Politics, sis. We can show Buntline that we're hard-working, honest ranchers. And Dameron says that Buntline sells books all over the country. Well, that must be him now. Oh, Mr. Clinton? Mr. Buntline, Mr. Spencer, welcome to our city. Thanks, thanks. Mr. Spencer, you sit with me. my daughter, Emma Clinton, Mr. Spencer, Mr. Buntline. How do you do, Mr. Clinton? Get right in here, sir. Driver. Frank 
Leslie. Well, howdy, Mr. Leslie. I thought you were in Denver. Well, do you know me, Wyatt, a Rolling Stone? Yeah, I know you. He threatened to shoot a fellow over in the Cosmopolitan. Oh, my joke went sour, Wyatt. I uh, dropped a lizard down a man's neck, and he didn't laugh. The feller had to lie for he'd get shot. So the feller told me. Well, I guess I got a little carried away. Yeah, I guess you did get a little carried away. Well, if you'd checked your gun, you wouldn't have had that trouble. I'm gonna have to hold you here for a while. Mr. Gibbs, you uh, put Mr. Leslie in a nice, clean cell all by himself. Would you like some coffee, Frank? Well, sure, Wyatt. Drop in for a chat later, huh? I sure will. Well, they call him Buckskin Frank. He's one of the fastest men with a gun I've ever seen. I want to keep real friendly. Oh, we're pals, why? Hey, lead the way, friend. I don't know this jail. Well, right this way, friend. <laughs> you know I can't figure out for the life of me how Wyatt Earp got the idea that you people were uh, outside the law. Just politics, Buntline. Why, Earp's a northerner. We're southerners. Uh-huh. Oh, Papa, tell him about the Epitaph newspaper. Oh, yes, Finn. I clean forgot about that. Got a Jack Leg editor named Clum, the Epitaph has. Clum. And everything that the Nugget says, Clum says contrary. Oh, and there's no such thing, then, as the Clanton Gang. Clanton Gang? Well, never heard of it, did you, Finn? Just a lot of mean talk, that's all. I mean, you people are blamed for what the real outlaws do? Why, yes, just politics, Buntline. Oh, daughter, uh, have, take a chair. Uh, Mr. Buntline wants his artist to draw our picture. What for? Well, to put in his new book. Now, don't be shy, my dear. Do I have to, Papa? It ain't a matter of having to, Emma. We aim to be friendly and show good manners. There you are, my dear. Thank you. Oh, Mr. Ike, will you sit right up close to your sister, please? Make a group of it. <clears throat> All right, Spencer, there you have them. The Clantons, en famille. Uh, that means all together. <laughs> there we are. Now, while he's drawing, could I make a few notes on the further misunderstandings? Just tell the truth, Buntline. That's all we ask. Well, that's exactly what you get, Mr. Clanton. And I want to thank you for your gracious hospitality. Uh, say goodbye to Miss Emma for us. Yeah. Oh, and tell her she's going to like that picture. We're going to put it right on the front cover. Fine. <laughs> now, you drive them into town, you drive real careful. Oh, yeah, thank you. Goodbye, sir. Goodbye. 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 I didn't believe those people. Leave them. I didn't either. Are you, uh, are you going to call them outlaws in the book? Well, of course I am. Naturally, I'll, I'll mix in a little of the Robin Hood and their activities, but don't you see the book? The Clampons posing as respectable ranchers and engaging in all kinds of lawlessness. I, I don't think they'll like that, Mr. Buntline. Yeah, but my readers will. Unless I'm very wrong, they're, uh, they're violent people, the Clantons. Well, of course they are. But you don't think they're going to come to New York to shoot me, do you? Well, I... Oh, now, Spencer, buck up. Did you ever hear of a writer getting shot for what he wrote or, or an artist for what he drew? And we're going to make liars out of those other writers because Ned Buntline actually visited the Clanton outlaws. <clears throat> It's a beautiful country around here, isn't it? <laughs> I did understand you, Wyatt. Here I am, a gambler and gunfighter, and... We always got along, though. How come? Well, for one thing, you never fight unless you have to. And, uh... Oh, I'm sorry. I'll, uh, I'll come back when you're not busy. No, he's not busy, man. I'll just take my gun belt, Mosey. Hmm? My gun belt. Mr. Leslie. Thanks again, Wyatt. All yours, man. Well, what is it this time? Your friend, Mr. Buntline, wants to write a book about us. 
He does? Well, I've read a couple of his books, and they're just trash. Now, is that a nice way to talk about your guest? Well, he's not a guest any longer. He, he came back here this morning, he and that, that artist fellow. Mr. Earp, you've got to do something about it. He's going to say terrible things about us, and, and, and Papa will just kill him, that's all. Wait a minute. How do you know that Mr. Buntline is going to write anything about the Clantons at all? By the questions he asked. He pretended to believe Papa, but I know he didn't. He's going to say we're bad people. Oh, no. No, he's going to make you into heroes. What? Oh, sure. Sure, if Mr. Buntline ever writes anything about the Clantons, why, uh, well, he'll change your father into a Robin Hood. You'll be victims of circumstance who rob the rich and give to the poor. I don't believe you. Oh, that's what Mr. Buntline told me himself. You don't have to worry. I'll probably wind up the villain. I don't trust Mr. Buntline. And I don't want him to put us in a book. And you'd better warn him he can't hide, not even in New York. <laughs> One of the doggondest fool things that Buntline has ever done. Now, you and I know outlaws, Mr. Leslie. Have you ever heard of one of our hoodlums that robbed the rich to give to the poor? Nope. No, neither have I. Well, I can't stop him from putting nobility into his outlaws, but what do you reckon Clanton will do if Buntline ever publishes that book? Why, he'd kill the fool, serve him right, too. Well, I'd rather have him educated. Would how? Well, I wonder just what would happen if uh, Mr. Buntline was kidnapped by buckskin Frank Leslie and his gang of lawless hoodlums. <laughs> oh, that sounds like fun, Wyatt. Well, give me the rest of the joke. Well, I want to just show them how Henri hoodlums can really be. That is, if you can get some boys to go along with it. Oh, yes, I think I can. <laughs> All right, on time, but keep him gagged. <laughs> Stick out your hand. Hey, boss. There's a big diamond in this ring. Mm. Look here. Hey, Benny. I want four of you on guard at all times. You see any Wells Fargo men or Pinkertons, you give me the word. We gotta get rid of him. Yeah, boss. And that means hiding the body before we light out. Now, you understand? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. You want that gag pulled tighter? Mm -hmm. Now, you just sit down there. I count your money. <laughs> There's less than a thousand here. You wearing a money belt? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ow! <laughs> Tell dead one to bring in them bank sacks. All of them? Everything. Don't know why we bothered to bring you along. Except somebody told you my name, didn't they? Mm -hmm. Now, didn't they? Mm -hmm. Who am I? Buckskin Frank Clanton. What else they tell you? They didn't tell me. Out with it. They just said that you were old man Clinton's cousin. May I have a glass of water, please? When I get around to it. We whacking it up here, Frank? I haven't decided yet. This fat fool's less than a thousand on him. Can he identify you? He can. Worse luck for him. Oh, no, I, I can't identify you, Mr. Clanton. You were just pointed out to me on Allen Street, and, and I couldn't... Got it! Nobody knows me as a Clanton. Yeah, he could tie in with the old man Clanton. Yeah, that cheap, low-down rustler, him and his rowdy boys. Better get it over with, Frank. 
You aim to bury him? Yeah, I might be safest. Tell Benny to start digging a grave. Yes, sir. You apparently don't know who I am. You're a drummer, ain't you? My name is Ned Buntline. I'm the author of 56 novels. Storybooks? Like they sell on trains? And all over the world, sir. And furthermore, I am a close personal friend of Marshal Wyatt Earp. <laughs> well, you must be getting mighty careless about his friends. Well, if any harm comes to me, he'll hunt you down. Sure. Now, we yanked you right out of Tombstone. Now, where was Earp? Well, he's heard about it by now, I assure you. Hey, boss. Deadwood said you was going to bury him first. Well, what about it? There ain't no time. We ain't far enough away. And besides, we still got to whack up all that bank money. You talk too much. But, boss. Now, turn around and walk out that door. No, I... No, boss. No. No, boss. No. Oh. Shot him in the back. It's as good a place as any. Hey, Deadwood, come here. Benny. Look at here, Frank. Oh, oh, oh. no. Oh. No. No, I won't. Keep sit still. Sending a committee of boys in to find out why I killed Benny and Deadwood. You must be mad. Yeah, like a fox. I thought there was honor among thieves. Honor? Why, there's over forty thousand dollars in them bags. Now, when the boys come in, now you just keep your mouth shut. You understand? Murderer! We better push along, Wyatt. I got the jitters. I don't trust that buckskin, Frank. Mr. Gibbs, you just don't understand practical jokers. Mr. Leslie's having the time of his life. Yeah, but you told me that Bunline was right spunky. He just might get some of them fellers sore at him. Yeah. Come on. Now, there are two of us in here, Tex. And five out there. Now, ain't a two-way cut better than splitting it up seven ways? Yeah. But what about him? He'd be a witness. Well, I got plans for him. What plans? Well, you see, now, he's a rich writing fella. We'll take him into Tucson and make him wire New York for $20,000. And if he don't, he won't give us no trouble, will you, Buntline? Will you promise not to kill those men outside? Well, now, why shouldn't we kill him? Well, you don't kill your own pals in cold blood. <laughs> well, now, where did you ever hear a thing like that? I reckon a fella's got to be that way, though, to write a book. Well, we better get at it, Tex. You're not... Now, you're you not... keep sitting right there. Murderers. Unbelievable fiends! I will not... You all done good. Benny did what you cashed in wonderful. That me a little play acting one time. <laughs> <laughs> well, you scared me. I thought I left a real bullet amongst them blanks. <laughs> Oh, you 
don't. Hey, Frank, this writing fella's trying to run off. You better say your prayers for sure. Go ahead. Go ahead and shoot me. You want to die? Well, my death will bring Wyatt Earp and some brave peace officers after you. Get the bullets out of my saddlebag here and get the guns ready. You stand up against that wall. Strength are real bullets. Shut up. I know what I'm doing. How are things going? Well, all right so far, Marshal, but if I was you, I'd move in fast. Sometimes Leslie gets carried away with his joking. Thank you. Now stand steady, your bunt line. How do you expect me to draw your picture with you flinching and moving? Get it over with. There's plenty of time. Move your head a little bit to the left. There. I want the rest of Glance to know how Buckskin Frank drawed your picture with bullets. You're almost hitting, Frank. Ah. I draw my wife's picture like this time and time again. Did you murder her? No, she left me. She said it got on her nerves. Silly girl. You notice the spacing of them bullets? You see any wobble in that line? Give me that other gun. You're gonna murder me anyway. Do it with one shot. Spunky, cuz, ain't he? Yeah. I kinda hate to do this. Hold it. Wider! Put the gun on the table. You all right, Mr. Bunline? Oh, why, thank heaven you're here. He, he killed most of his men, and he was gonna kill me. He... Mr. Gibbs, you take those criminals outside, tie them up, and put them on a horse. We're gonna throw them in jail. Outside, Embers. Scum! Come. Come. Now, you come on over here and sit down, Mr. Buntline. You look a mite nervous. Oh, White, it was awful. It was just awful. Uh, well, you just relax there. Yeah. Mr. Gibbs, bring Mr. Buntline the bottle. Now, I want you to tell me exactly what happened. Oh, Wyatt, he, he broke every rule in the outlaw's code. Oh. The men he killed didn't have a chance. They didn't have a chance. Yeah. No. Well, when you're raised by Apaches, it's... Yeah. Uh, you see, they, they, they took all my things, and they, they took my money, and they were going to hold me for ransom. And if you hadn't come, I'd, I'd be dead. I'd just be dead. Here, thank you. Mr. Gibbs, here, now, you take some of it. Yeah, thanks very much. Just drink a little of that, you and me. I would be dead. Mm. You sure not, you're not exaggerating? Wyatt, when a man comes as close to death as I was, he sees things very clearly. Mm. I remembered everything you said, but you only guessed at their fiendishness. Uh, really? Yes. <laughs> But soon, the world will know the truth. Huh. Wyatt, was he really raised by Apaches? Mescalero tribe, I think. Mescalero? How do you spell? Oh, never mind, never mind, never mind. I'll get it. Bushwhackers don't get us, the Apaches will. Well, Mr. Gibbs, you know, you don't have to go along. Well, if you're fool enough to try it, I'm fool enough to go along. 
quieter it came to Arizona territory, it was wild and raw. Civilization was represented by the city of Tucson, a few turbulent mining towns like Tombstone, and a scattering of army forts. Since the Apaches were a constant menace, travel was precarious, even for Wyatt Earp. 15,000? Well, that's what they say. The army payroll. Some blooming major carrying it on the morning stage. 15,000 clams. Yes, sir. You want to make a bet them boxes don't get to where they're headed? You figure somebody will hold up that stage? Why, for two cents, I'd risk it myself. There's your two cents. You fellas road agents? <clears throat> you mean to say you don't know me, sir? Can't say I do. Why, I've rode with the best. The Daltons, Blackjack Ketchum, Billy... Uh... Oh, sure, you know Billy... Uh, uh... Well, that's very interesting, gentlemen. I'm a United States Deputy Marshal. Well, uh, Marshal, sure, and I, that is, we were only joshing. That's the truth, Marshal. You see, he's a swamper over to Lucky Cuss Mine. Oh, he is, huh? Where'd you hear this rumor about the Army payroll? Why, it's all over town. Sure, all over town. Well, you stick to swamping. Kill it. <laughs> Major Fletcher, Army Paymaster. You wired up? That's right, sir. Uh, glad to meet you. Heard about you. I just heard about you. Oh, that's so? Yeah, rumor has it that you're uh, carrying $15,000 on this morning's stage. Army payroll. Well, I don't know how it got out, Marshal. That's why I'm here. I got three months' pay for Fort Breckenridge, and I'm concerned about it. I don't blame you. I, uh, I've also heard the talk around town that the stage may be held up. As long as you can be sure it was only talk. Well, I've got one man riding shotgun, but I'd rather have two. I came to ask you to help. Well, Major, I can't leave Tombstone. I'd sure appreciate it if you'd go with me, sir. All the way to Fort Breckenridge? Well, we'd leave the stage at Benson and then ride out across the desert. It'd take two, three days, but it's government business. Well, why don't you have the cavalry meet you at Benson? Well, they're too busy. I hope it's on Apache lookout. Fifty miles across the open desert with $15,000. I'd sure enjoy your company. All right, Major. I'd like to talk to my deputy first. Have him meet us at Benson with some horses and mules. Good. Stage lows in ten minutes. I'll be there. I sure appreciate this, Mr. Earp. <laughs> Glad you made it, Marshal. Here, wait a minute, wait a minute. I want those boxes hidden. You're only going to Benson, Major. The other baggage goes straight on through. I want those boxes in a safe place. Here, put them in the booth. Now I know how the word got out. Yeah? How? Oh. Well, Major, it's one thing to be worried. It's another thing not to use caution. Uh, I guess I'm so used to transporting money, I, uh... Well, there I go again. I just don't remember. Maybe you better start. Too late for that. I'm retiring in two months. Who are the passengers? Well, the boy's going home to New Mexico. The lady? She's just uh, passing through, you might say. Came from Tucson. What about the other one? Rode in last night on the stage. Probably the only man in town don't know what's in these boxes. Or. Good luck to both of us, Marshal. May I? Uh, sure. Thank you. You 
think there will be trouble, senor? Might be. You carry a gun? No. What about you, sir? What's that to you? I want to find out how much we can count on if we're attacked. Defending government money is your job, not mine. That tells me what I want to know. Passengers, hmm? They're kind of typical. Not suspicious of any of them. I'm more worried about road agents. You don't seem to be very worried, though. Oh, I'm used to this. How long have you been a paymaster? Almost ten years. Ten years? It's a long time for one assignment. The Army usually switches the officers around. I thought administration would lead to faster promotion. I was wrong. More coffee? No, thanks. You looking for something? That's right, senor. In my own package. You think I am such a fool as to try to rob him here? Could be checking the baggage to make it easier later on. You accuse me of being a thief, senor? No. Don't. I will kill you. You told me you weren't armed. I tell you I am no thief. I am a stranger, see? A Mexican, see? And of a poor family. The Holy Mother knows how we could use that money. Only a little of it. But I do not steal. I believe you. Get what you want. Senora. Senorita. Traveling? 
girl like me gets around, as you know. As I know? Marshals, always hounding people. I take it you don't care much for marshals. Well, I found there are two kinds of lawmen. The ones who won't give you a chance, and the ones who will. For a consideration. Which kind are you, Marshal Ertz? Well, you won't have any trouble with me. That is, uh, of course, unless you plan to rob the stage. Well, maybe you'd talk different if I'd stayed in your town. You didn't stay. That's right, I didn't. I'm heading back east now. I'm gonna start over. It's not too late. It's never too late. I'm getting out now, not one minute too soon. I hope it works. It will. This time it will. Lord. Starting your last stretch to Benson. Yes, now or never. All right, Mr. Ketching, let's walk. Gracias. Major, do you want to give out that money or take a chance on somebody getting hurt? Could we make it? Maybe. There's six outlaws and we've got four... three guns. Don't worry about me. All right, make a run for it. All right. Surprise will be in our favor. All right, we're going to try and run through them. If you slow down, make them think we're going to stop. When I give you the word, give the horses their head. Yes, sir. Major, you take that side. Don't fire yet. Get down.
giving up. We got through. Thanks. How far are we from Benson? About an hour. It's an overnight stop. We better stay there. Why? You better just start our ride through the desert when it's daylight. Good morning, Howdy, Ward. Hi, Shotgun. Good to see you. I brought him horses, you wanted. Oh, good. Uh, Major Fletcher, this is my deputy, Shotgun Gibbs. Glad to see you, Gibbs. Hey, are there rooms for us here? Oh, si, senor. But three small ones. The well, boy and I can double up. One for the lady, too. How'd you take the third one? Shotgun and I will make ourselves comfortable in the waiting room. All right. We'll put the boxes in my room. I'll sleep with them under my bed. Sure you wouldn't like me to watch over them? Oh, they'll be safe there. He'll be right outside the door. Well, I... They're my responsibility here. I'm the one who'd stand court-martial. Oh, thanks. Say you're uh, two months from retirement? I said it was up for retirement in two months. I haven't decided about it yet. Oh. Retirement pay isn't much, you know. Of course, I'm alone. No family to support. Well, after all these years in the Army, you think you'd like being a civilian? I don't know. Why? Good night. Good night. Who was that? I don't know. Come on. Major Fletcher? Major Fletcher? Go get the others. Garcia! Come on! What happened to him, Why? I don't know. He wants to come in the window and sandbag the major in his sleep. You get the money? Yeah, both boxes. What happened? Where's Carp? He's gone. He must have got up in the dark and slipped out his window. Yeah, slipped in that one. Has he got too much of a start? Let's go get him. Oh, wait a minute. You can't trail a man in the dark here. Wait till dawn. Give him two hours head start. Give me my boots. Ay, esto nunca nos había pasado aquí antes. Venga, esto también. Trail wide. Look how deep them hoof prints is dug in. It's well loaded down. Sounds like somebody a digging. just shoot he was gonna surrender I didn't think so what are you worried about he's a thief 
There are the money boxes. Looks like he's aiming to bury him. Come back later. Lock's not broken. Give me a hand. We'll get him on a horse. We can get him back to the station before the stage leaves. Why don't you just bury him here and go on? We've got a good start to Fort Breckenridge. A man is dead, Major Fletcher. There are certain legalities that have to be attended to. Well, I... This happens to be my job. And I'll give the orders. Shot cop for robbing him. Now I want to see exactly what he paid for. I don't like your implication, Marshal. I didn't expect you to. Are you going to open those boxes or have to shoot the locks off? Those are government property. And I'm a United States Marshal. Rocks? Ain't nothing but rocks. Where's the money? Maybe there never was any. In those boxes. You hired cop to take those boxes out and bury them, so they'd never be found. Then you shot him so he couldn't talk. You're guessing there. Am I? You're retiring in two months, Major. Retirement pay isn't too bad. Helped out with $15,000. You could never prove that. I could if I found the money. All right. Where is the money? You hid it earlier? I gave it to somebody to keep for you. Lady, perhaps. <laughs> you. If it hadn't been for you, it would have been easy. Well, you're the one that asked me to come along, remember? That was to give you a perfect alibi, wasn't it? How do you find out? A look, a word here and there, and cops' mistake. He should have patted his horse's hooves. What about the money, Ward? I think you'll find it in Miss Crystal's baggage. Go take a look. I'm sorry, Carrie. That's all right, honey. It was only a dream, anyway. Tried. I wish you had tried something legal. I'm sorry, man. I guess Ringo's in town already. Why don't you gun him right away, Curly? He's the one who's sore. He'll have to come after me. Are you sure you want to fight Curly Burroughs just now? Yeah. What a break for Wyatt. Ringo and Brocious, top guns for the Clanton outfit, gunning for each other. You don't figure they'll really shoot it out, do you, Doc? Mr. Gibbs? Your naivete charms me. When two top gunfighters like Johnny and Curly have a fallen out, it's just a matter of waiting. And while I'm waiting, I aim to get some bets down. Uh, who do you pick to win? It's a professional secret. You make your own bets. <laughs> One of the mysteries of the Old West to amateur historians was how so many top gunfighters lived so long. The answer, as Wyatt Earp said, is simple. They seldom fought one another. When men of equal speed and skill got in a gunfight, it meant death to both. Thus, when Curly Brocious and John Ringo rode into Tombstone to settle a quarrel, it looked as if Wyatt would soon be rid of two enemies. 
galloping horses on Allen Street's against the law. I gotta talk to you. I didn't want it, but Papa said I should. All right. Allow me. Now, uh, let me get this straight. Brocious and Ringo are in town, and they're threatening to shoot each other, and your papa thinks that I ought to stop the fight? Well, isn't that what your job is, to keep law and order? Yes. Yes, I'll have a talk with Johnny and Curly. Well, disarm them. Run them out of town. Oh, I can't do that. They've racked their guns, and they're behaving decent. Well, you mean you can't stop this fight? Well, I can try and talk some sense into their head. By the way, you never told me what the fight was all about. Oh, oh. Brocious accidentally shot Ringo's horse. They, they were in a fight with some Mexican rustlers. And Ringo, he thinks that uh, Curly did it on purpose. Well, I guess, who knows what Ringo thinks? Anyway, you better stop this fight, or the Nugget newspaper will have you fired. <laughs> wanted to see me, Darren? Not as editor of that wretched little sheet you publish, but you're supposed to be acting mayor. This goes on page one unless Earp stops the fight. Deliberate slaughter on Allen Street. Is that what you call good police work? Hmm? Brocious, Ringo? I hadn't heard about this. You've heard about it now, Mr. Mayor. Well, now I'll tell you, Mr. Darren. There hasn't been any shooting. Where did you get your tip off? From old man Clanton? I don't reveal my news sources to you, Clum. Well, where's your sheriff, Johnny Bean? Why doesn't he stop this? Well, sheriff Bean was suddenly called away. Mm-hmm. I'll just bet he was. Nugget doesn't stoop to argue with a cheap little imitator. I want action from the city police. And that means up. Immediate action. Well, now I'll tell you, Mr. Demron. You got me shaking in my boots. Well, sir, you had better be. Good day. Well, old man Clanton's got a lot of gall bringing his quarrels into Tombstone. I think Ringo and Brocious are on their own. Gunfighters usually like audiences. Well, then let them shoot it out, White. I wish I could. Dameron does have a point. No, let him holler. No, sir. It was just a quick brawl in the saloon and a shooting. I wouldn't be expected to do anything about it, but I have been warned about this. Townspeople expect me to do something. Yes, but... What? I'll have a talk with Ringo and Brocious. No. Oh. Stay out of it, Mr. Mayor. All right, Wyatt. Wyatt, good luck. You see, Curly's at the Alhambra, talking fight. Hello, Mr. Ringo. Well, it's Taint Marshal Earp. I hear you uh, aim to settle something with Curly. That's kind of foolish, isn't it? Foolish? <laughs> John can take him. I don't think so. No, I think they'd both be dead. You want to bet? Shut up, Irish. They tell me that uh, Curly shot your horse by accident. My horse? My business. He offered to pay you for it, didn't he? Why don't you move along? Yeah. All right. I've got your last words. Now I'd like a before death statement from Curly. Was Herb trying to scare us? <laughs> well, here's to good old Johnny Ringo. Little pals a long time. But not now, Curly. I still can't believe it. Getting sore of... Don't tell me. That ain't Wyatt Herb. Good old Johnny Law. Come on over, Wyatt. Larkin, give Wyatt your chair. Sure, Curly. You 
surprise me, Mr. Brushes. Why'd you let this go so far? Who, me? Yeah, you. You could have offered to pay for the horse. I didn't only offer to, I bought him another horse. Better than the one that got killed. Right, Lycan? Curly, give 200 for him. The proof is he's still riding it. Now, what more can a man do, Wyatt? Well, you could go on back to Clanton Ranch. Let Ringo cool off. He'd think I was scared. We don't run from nobody. Well, it seems to me that the least you boys could do is take your fight outside of town. Now, why don't you and Ringo just shoot it out on the trail? Johnny don't want it that way. He said if he caught Curly in Tombstone, he'd gun him. You couldn't take that either, Wyatt. Man can't back down from a fight. We ain't scared of Ringo. All right. Tom will just have to dig two graves in Boot Hill. So long, Curly. Best bet I've seen in months. And you two men just sit there. Haven't you any imagination? Ringo versus Brocious. In a grudge fight with guns. Think of the amusing possibilities. All right, Doc, such as what? Even money, they kill each other. Or two to one that Ringo kills Brocious, and I'll take that bet the other way. I'll bet ten to one that Ringo dies and Brocious is only wounded, and I'll take that bet the other way also. All right, gentlemen, get up your money. Well, what odds do you give on them not fighting at all? Well, that's a very interesting thought. Very interesting. Doc. Right with you, Wyatt. Now, you two sportsmen, stay right here. Don't leave. Look, Doc, I'm in trouble. Just want to get this town cooled off somewhat. This breaks loose. Now, we can't afford a showdown between Ringo and Brocious. You're a fool. Thanks. Let them kill each other. Then the McLowry boys will be top guns for Clanton. You're thinking like a hoodlum. I am not. I'm thinking like a gambler. You mean you're making bets on this? Of course I am. I got some customers waiting inside. Look, I want you to do me a favor. You want me to kill them? No, I want you to talk them out of it. I respect your opinion. Me, I'm just a John Law trying to keep the peace. Am I a friend, Wyatt? Then I say as your friend, this is the best thing that's happened to you since you came to Tombstone. Johnny Ringo and Curly Broch is dead, and you don't even have to kill him. I'm wearing a star. I can't think the way you do, Doc. Nobody will blame you but Dameron of the Nugget, and he blames you for everything anyway. You know, you're a gambler. Why don't you uh, make bets that there won't be any fight, and then you stop it? You can get awful long odds that way. Sorry, Deacon. You love your enemies. I want them buried. Emma said you promised to talk to Ringo and Brocious. I did talk to him. No luck? Then throw him in jail. I don't want this fight to happen. Nothing to arrest him for, Mr. Clanton. They checked the guns. They've created no disturbance. Yet. Where's Johnny being? Well, he, uh, ducked out. Huh. Figured he would. Judge Spicer in town? Reckon so. Then I'll talk to him. And you come along to back me up. That's what us taxpayers paying you for. All right. I'll see you over there. Yeah, it was a day out hammer looking. How's he feeling, Irish? He's making up his mind, Joe. Sit at another table, boys, and leave Ringo alone. Bartender, bring us a bottle and some glasses. Howdy, boys. Come on over. Hello, Curly. Curly, good to see you. You all the friends I got? 
Well, some of the bunch taking sides with Johnny. That's their business. Where's Frank and Tom McLowry? They couldn't make it. Tom said him and Frank wish you good luck to Curly. <laughs> they know Ringo. He has funny spells. You know, I saw Ringo shoot Turk Davis because he ordered beer instead of whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> That's Ringo for you. I can bring another chair over. We might as well be comfortable while we're waiting. Joe, bring us all a whiskey. Curly ain't going after Ringo. Ringo's got to come after Curly first. Sure. I don't want the old man blaming me for this. This row's dividing my whole outfit. And if Ringo and Brocious go to shooting, there's going to be a big war on Allen Street. And all that Marshal Earp does is talk. How can he arrest them? I'll say they both rustle some of my steers. Could you prove that? You can hold them on suspicion, can't you? No, sir. In fact, I think you've got an awful lot of cheek to bring your troubles into Tombstone. My last week, you tried to ambush Marshal Earp and Deputy Gibbs. And there's still the killing of that Wells Fargo guard. I see. A taxpayer can't ask a judge and a John Law to do their duty. Well, I'll speak to Dameron to the nugget. He'll blister your hides for you. You'd think he was a law-abiding citizen. He's got us cornered, and he knows it. Well, sir, I, uh, I could pick a fight with Johnny Ringo. No. That would just make things worse. You'd have to wound the man or kill him. Yes, sir. Clanton's put us all on trial, Wyatt. People expect us to act with strict legality. Now, couldn't you find some ordinance that Ringo and Curly have broken? I'll try. Hey, Ringo! Johnny Ringo! I want to talk to you. Curly wants me to explain something. Come on out, Ringo! It's that blabbermouth Larkin. Go out and see what he's up to. Yes, sir. Right away, Johnny. Where's Ringo? Why didn't he come out himself? He don't talk to blabbermouths like you. Oh, yeah? what I blabber about? He said Johnny was running away when his horse got shot. That's a dirty lie. He also said that Curly give Johnny a stolen horse. Another lie. Oh? So what kind of a horse is Curly riding? You know, you wouldn't be telling lies like that, Irish, if I was carrying my gun. You go get your gun. I'll wait till Curly's taking care of Ringo. Then I'll come after you. It'll be the other way around, Larkin. I'm gonna gun you. Talk's cheap. You want to hear what Curly has to say or don't you? No, Ringo ain't interested in what that fool says. Next time, you'll be wearing your gun. You ask for it. You tell Ringo to come out and make his play. And I'll be waiting for you. Brocious is waiting at the Alhambra. You'll have to go there after him. All right. Now? In a minute. Get me a drink. Sure, Johnny. Bartender. Whiskey. What was all that about? Gibbons and Larkin got a fight of their own started. Threatened to gun each other. Oh, that's fine. Any particular time? Yeah. After their heroes kill each other. All right. You go on over to the jail. Wait for me. I got something I want to do, and I'll join you later. It's almost 4 o'clock. This is beginning to fidget me. Ah, uh, stop worrying about the old man, Curly. Go over to the birdcage and finish him, Curly. Ringo probably thinks you're scared. Well, he thinks wrong. Curly! Ringo's coming after you. How do you know? That liar in Irish has been talking. Too much and too big. Good. Then it won't be my fault. <laughs> Well, we 
can make a case to stop him? Yeah, who's that? Well, Curly's horse has got a mangled brand. Ringo's horse hasn't got a brand at all. They could be stolen. Yeah, they sure could be. Ringo must be ready to go after brochures by now. You going over to the Alhambra and arrest Curly. I'll get Ringo. Right. <laughs> Irish? Get my gun. Right away, Johnny. Yeah. Where were you, Ringo? Uh, Brocious hasn't got the stomach for this. I'll back you, Johnny, in case Larkin does anything wrong. Give me your gun, Ringo. Back up, all of you. Come on, back away. I said, back away. He got Ringo thrown into jail by blabbing too loud on the street. And I'll fix Larkin. I told him I would. With your mouth or with that 45? I'm gonna gun him down. Looks like he's after you. He threatened to kill me and call me a liar. I got witnesses. You don't need witnesses. Put on your gun belt. He's putting on his gun. That's what you wanted, ain't it, Irish? I can take that slow poke. Hurry it up, Larkin! Brocious and Ringo out here, quick. That's Larkin, Marshal. He's dead, Marshal. Mr. Gibbs, bring our two heroes over here. Stop the fire, boy. Gibbons was a mite faster than Larkin. Caught him in the stomach. At the same time, Larkin caught Gibbons in the chest with a reflex yank in the trigger. They must have gotten off the second shot at the same time after they hit the ground. Both were hit in the head and killed. That's all, gentlemen. Let's go, boys. All right, gentlemen, pay out the money on the no-fight bet, 100 to 1. What about the other bets, Doc? They've all been canceled. Ringo and Brocious didn't fight. Come on, gentlemen, pay up. Uh-huh, not yet. Look, Brocious and Ringo can still fight. 
soon as they get out of jail. He's right, Doc. The bet should stand. How much you want to bet on your own lives? Hold it, Doc. You men get off the street. I say get off the street. I may need your help. Both sides may start shooting again. Not until you turn Ringo and Brocious loose. I want to thank you, Wyatt, for arresting those two. I made the killer. Be act serious for a minute. We'll try and get them out of town. Now? This is a powder keg. I figure if I can get Brocious and Ringo outside the city limits, Clanton Cowboys will go too. You're going to give Ringo and Brocious back their guns? Outside of town. Well, then I'll be very happy to tend to my assistance. I know what you're thinking, and you're wrong. We've had enough gunfighting for one day. Certainly, most certainly. Back that gun, Mr. Gibson. Well, they still look mean and ornery to me, Wyatt. Got no legal right to withhold their weapons. Here's the boat. Maybe you ought to get them down off their horses at least, Wyatt. I got $6,500 bet on this. You hear that, Johnny? Doc's betting on our hides. You ain't so smart, Doc. We ain't fighting just to make you rich. Come on, Curly. Sure thing, Johnny. Too bad. We couldn't have picked a prettier place for him to die. Had a small bet on him myself. Top guns usually live quite a while, Mr. Gibbs. They seldom shoot at their own equals. Let two of our men get killed. Just wait till you read the nugget. Deacon, you live to regret this. I already do. Well, he cleaned up the country, the old Wild West country. He made law and order prevail. And none can deny it, the legend of Wyatt forever will live on the trail. Oh, Wyatt Earp, Wyatt Earp, brave, courageous, and bold. Long live his fame, and long live his glory, and long may his story be told. Long may his story be Như, như lúc vừa thả nó ra quả xích ra là nó chạy đến ra lại là phải không phải Nhưng trong anh ấy có vẻ nhớ như con mèo không? Thì chắc cũng Ông như anh mèo con chị chứ 
Yeah. Chị không biết đúng không? <cười> Kiểu nuôi cũng được mà không nuôi cũng được Nhà chị nuôi con đấy lâu chưa? Ước tính ra phải đồng tầm 2 năm rồi đấy Ui, 2 năm rồi à? Ừ, 